For this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have Charlotte, and Charlotte is recovering from a severe left-sided middle cerebral artery stroke and presents with global aphasia. Which of the following is the most appropriate to emphasize during treatment? So we have A, accurate interpretation of common sayings. B, strict communication through verbal only. C, gesturing for items that are not present. And D, is reducing patient aggression and impaired judgment. All right. So let's go ahead, go up to the top of this one. Obviously, you can see this is a bit about global aphasia. And for those of you on the podcast, I'm telling you, I got a fire cheat sheet that helps you to prepare for the MPTE in regards to this concept. You need to check this thing out. Now, here's a little disclaimer. Before we get started with this question, I'm telling you all, there's a lot in here. This is going to be one where I'm going to probably teach you a bit, all right? Um, so you may want to slow this up a little bit, maybe rewind it a couple times, take some notes because there's a lot of great information uh, that's going to come out of this one. So we got Charlotte is recovering from a severe left-sided middle cerebral artery stroke. And I'll go ahead and stop there for a moment because there's a lot here, all right? When it comes down to the MPTE, you got to know your strokes very well. One of the major ones is the middle cerebral artery stroke. It's the most common. All right. One thing that you got to know is where does the middle cerebral artery supply as far as the brain's concerned? Which lobes? So go ahead and rattle those off for me. You should be saying the parietal lobe it supplies. It supplies the temporal lobe for sure. And it supplies the frontal lobe. Well, the lateral aspects of it. I mean, it, it's not a lot of the frontal lobe there, but it does get into the slight lateral side of the frontal lobe. Okay, so we get all of those. Now, here's the deal. It says that the patient has a left-sided middle cerebral artery stroke. That's also important that they said left and not right. Do you know why though? I mean, this is really important. So you know we have the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And you know the left hemisphere has its major functions and the right hemisphere has its major functions. Can we just go over those real quick before we go on? All right, so the left side has things like analysis and organization and being methodical and motor initiation, things along the lines of that. But it also has what big one? language there we go I, and, that, and that's huge right there so the left hemisphere one of its major functions is the language your ability to comprehend written and spoken language but also your ability to express yourself through spoken language your ability to talk all right so a lot of times our patients end up with things like Broca's aphasia Wernicke's aphasia because of a left middle cerebral artery stroke all right now, the right side of the brain, you might want to write this down. The right side of the brain is a lot more things related to gesturing and perception, ability to perceive, you know, visual spatial orientation, hand-eye coordination, judgment. Those are all related to more of right-sided brain function. All right. So why did I just go over all of that with you? Well, the question here says that the patient has severe left-sided middle cerebral artery stroke. And so I know a lot of those left-sided brain functions are impaired, but my right-sided brain functions aren't really impaired with this type of stroke. So it gives you an idea of some of the things that we may want to focus on with our patient. Now it says, as we continue down the question, it says, and presents with global aphasia. For those of you who are not familiar with global aphasia, that is going to be a combination of both Broca's and Wernicke's, where the patient has poor comprehension, difficulty comprehending, comprehending spoken and written language, all right, but also difficulty expressing themselves, speaking. They have slow speech, hesitant speech, not able to find the words. So global aphasia is one of the, the severe forms of aphasia, the most severe form. And the patients usually have a really bad prognosis or poor prognosis, I should say, when they have this. All right. And so that gives you an idea of what our patient is, is going through, what they're dealing with right now. And so the question stem, the last sentence of the question says, which of the following is the most appropriate 
to emphasize during treatment. Got to say that again. Which of the following is the most appropriate to emphasize during treatment? What do we want to do as PTs during our treatment? For those of you on the podcast, let me read through these answer choices again. We got A is accurate interpretation of common sayings. B, strict communication through verbal only. C, gesturing for items that are not present. And D is reducing patient aggression and impaired judgment. So let's start off at the top. It says accurate interpretation of common sayings. So a lot of y'all are familiar with common sayings, right? Like dime a dozen, right? That's one of the ones uh, that you, you commonly hear or chip on the shoulder or the jack of all trades, but the master of none. Those are different common sayings that are in our culture, right? Um, and so here's the deal. Is that something that I want to emphasize with my patient with global aphasia? Is that something that I really want to do? And so I'm looking at that and I'm like, you know what? Although that is an important skill to have, especially when you're conversing with people, is that something that I really want to do with a patient with global aphasia? I mean, it's already difficult for this patient to interpret you know, information, especially written or spoken language, it's going to be difficult for them to do that. And then you're asking them not just to interpret what someone is saying, just regular communication, but now be able to interpret a common saying and what it means. I mean, you're really taking this patient to a whole different level that's a bit more advanced for where they're at right now. I mean, with this condition, I don't feel like accurate interpretation of common sayings is something that we're really trying to you know use here or should be emphasizing here we really should be looking to emphasize those things that the patient is is able to do think about the left side of the brain right we said that it was more language written spoken comprehension expressing yourself right but we also said the right side was what do you remember yeah, we said it was judgment. We said it was hand-eye coordination and perception. Yeah, but we also said it was gesturing too, right? Facial gesturing, the ability to gesture. Well, it's very effective for us to use what the patient has available, which is their ability to gesture. We want to really heighten that skill as best as we possibly can. And so accurate interpretation of common sayings is not really utilizing the patient's strengths or at least what the patient would be able to potentially do. And so what I want to do is I want to put an X next to that one for right now. I know a lot of you selected A, but let's go ahead and just look through some of the other answers first and then we'll talk about it. Right. Let's look at B. B says strict communication through verbal only. I don't know if you've ever heard of constraint induced movement therapy. You ever heard of that? We, we use it a lot of times with patients who have a stroke. It's where we restrict their ability to use their sound arm or their sound extremity and force them to use the extremity that's affected. What does that do? Help with that neuroplasticity, right? Force them to utilize that, that, that hand, that upper extremity or lower extremity, whatever it is, that's the most effective. And then we build back the strength and the motor control and all that a lot quicker, right? So that's constraint-induced movement therapy. Well, guess what? We have that same exact thing, but for patients who have aphasia. We call it constraint-induced language therapy or SILT, C-I-L-T. And this is where we are going to restrict the patient to only being able to speak. All right, They're, that's the only way they can communicate is through speech. That is it. No gestures, no written writing things down or drawing things. No, no, no. The only way they can communicate is through verbal. We force that and we force them to communicate. Now, here's the deal. Is that utilizing this patient's strengths at this point? Is this allowing the patient to heighten a lot of their abilities to communicate? I would say, well, you could do something like this, but it's highly aggressive, it's very advanced, and the patient is going to struggle. Why? Because their language centers are very, very affected. You know, they, they have difficulties with that Broca's area, with the Wernicke's area, so they're having difficulty with written and spoken language, but also expressing themselves. So it is gonna be very difficult for this patient 
to do something like this. And it may prove to be a bit counterproductive where the patient's just getting frustrated, you're not moving forward and not completing your actual PT treatment. You're not getting done with what you wanna get done with. All right, and so I believe that B is a little bit too far advanced. It's not really something I would really look to do with global aphasia. Um, let's see if there's something better. Let's look at C. C says gesturing for items that are not present. So y'all heard me earlier. You said <laughs> we were talking about how the right side of the brain was the perception, the judgment, the gesturing. And so I look at this answer choice. It says gesturing for items that are not present. And it, it all automatically, like, you know, really brings me into this answer. Like, I really like it. And the reason being is it's using the patient's right side of their brain in order to help them to communicate. All right. And so I, I like this. And actually gesturing for items that are not present is a part of something called visual action therapy. V as in Victor, A as in Alpha, T as in Tango. That therapy, visual action therapy. And so this is one of the major strategies, like one of the number one interventions for patients with global aphasia, that therapy. And it's this progression, it's 12 steps. The patient starts off just drawing, or I mean, you should say tracing objects. All right, so they're tracing objects. And then you take the object away, the patient can still see it. And now they're gonna trace the object, but the object's not directly like in front of them, right? They're not directly drawing around the object. And what you do is you continuously progress it to where now the patient is gesturing to you exactly what the object is. Even though they don't see it anymore, they're gesturing to you the object. Why is that important? Why do we do something like that? Well, we want to have the patient start to gesture their wants and needs. And is that not very effective for this patient who has problems with comprehension and speaking? It's an awesome strategy because now the patient's going to be able to gesture to you the things that they want and need. Of course, this is a process. It doesn't happen in a couple seconds. This is an entire form of therapy. It's an intervention that takes time, but we do wanna get the patient up to the point where they're able to gesture for items that are not present. It's a part of our wants and needs training. I like it. It's one of the number one things that we use for global aphasia. Looks like a great answer right now. Let's look at D. D says reducing patient aggression and impaired judgment. So I don't like this answer as much. And the reason why I don't is because nowhere in the question is it saying that the patient's aggress aggressive. Nowhere is it saying that the patient has impaired judgment. All right. And so I'm kind of like, well, why am I really going after that? All right. Nothing's really cluing me into it. But here's the, the one that nails it, nails the coffin shut is the fact that when patients are typically aggressive, when patients are typically showing up with impaired judgment, do they tend to have a left hemisphere stroke or a right hemisphere stroke? Well, by me asking the question, I'm sure you're like, well, it's probably right, Kyle. And that's, that's exactly the right answer. That's correct. That patients who have right-sided strokes are ones who tend to present with impaired judgment. Why? Because our judgment centers are on the right side. All right. And so I do not recommend, I don't think that this is a great answer at all to go with D. It just doesn't make sense. All right. And so that leaves us with our final answer of C. This is super tough. Congratulations if you got this question correct. This one was really tough. Because global aphasia, Wernicke's, or even Broca's, a lot of times we're spending too long going through the book looking at what the differences are between them. And that's great to look at the differences. But we also have to understand how do we treat one versus the other, especially when it comes down to things like global aphasia. Do you know how to treat that? Do I, do I just talk to them? Do I show them pictures of something? Like, how do I treat it? And those are the types of questions that wind up coming up and you have to do the best to solve it, all right? 
So that's the reason why I've created things like these cheat sheets, like these one, two pages to help you digest this information a lot quicker. And that's what I've done for you with global aphasia. I threw in some brokers and Wernicke's in the cheat sheet as well. So if you're on the podcast right now and you want that cheat sheet, go into your show notes and click the link in there. I have it in there for you and freaking dominate the April exam using that right there.